Our Friday nightcap still here, and it is time for everybody's MVP of the week. Who had a big one? Paul, I know your MVP is also one of the most important stories that a lot of people missed. It's from a hearing on Capitol Hill about the U.S.'s withdrawal from Afghanistan. Just watch this. We came to the middle of the runway where there was a blood, where, there, where blood saturated, dusty clothing and headscarves smoldered on the ground. These, dead, these covered the dead bodies that had fallen from the landing gear of the plane that just take off. At this moment, I truly understand that the Afghans were risking everything, even death, to escape the Taliban. It was chaos, but we worked together to figure out the next best steps. Tens of thousands of people descended upon Abbey Gate. Then a flash <clears throat> and a massive wave of pressure. I'm thrown 12 feet onto the ground, but instantly knew what had happened. I opened my eyes to Marines dead or unconscious lying around me. Paul, I want you to be our reporter, our analyst, our expert. What is this all about? That's Sergeant Tyler Vargas Andrews, 25 years old, from California. He lost an arm and a leg. He had a terrible abdominal wound. Right now, he's got 100 to 150 ball bearings inside his body. Hmm. And he testified before Capitol Hill a tremendous amount of courage just to share his story and also to speak truth to power and demand accountability. There hasn't been, we talked about accountability earlier, there has been no accountability for the debacle that was a with withdrawal of Afghanistan. And he was there to demand accountability for his friends, for the 13 service members who died, to the Afghans who are still under attack and dying right now, living in what is basically like Gilead. Um, this was a very, very brave and important thing. I know it's Friday and we want to be uplifting, but I think that man's courage and the courage we saw from all those veterans should give everybody some, some faith in America. And he's my MVP. Do you think we're going to get those answers? We're going to try. I'm going to try. I hope you'll all try. What do you think the holdup is? Guilt? I don't know. But, but Afghanistan has become Forgotistan. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants accountability. And right now, women can't go to school. Our friends and allies have been left to die. And veterans are facing this moral injury. I call it America's great betrayal of Afghanistan. And that's what it is. And it continues to be compounded by every day we don't address it. Oof. David? Uh, my MVP also was on Capitol Hill this week. It's Jay Powell, the chair of the Fed. And okay, I there are I'm not very get too few long, people yeah. that are going. In, in, in 2023, the there's not night. that many people out there who are going, Jay Powell, he's my boy. No, and I think that's the point. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying he deserves it for how the economy is doing right now, but he's doing as much as he can. That's evident. As he went on the Hill this week, talked to the Senate and the House. Uh, he's trying to get us out of this mess. It's not an enviable job. This is like the, the MVP for thanklessness, I think, for the job that he <laughs> why? What specifically? He went, it was a hearing, he did his job. What's so special about what he did? It gets to what you're saying, which is I think that people in this country feel like the economy isn't working for them. Things are very difficult. Inflation isn't going away. Prices are still very high. Uh, and he has to make the case that the Fed, with the tools it has, is going to be able to fix that. Um, it's been a long while. Uh, prices have been high and getting higher for a long time. And uh, he continues to make this case. And stays resolute, and I think he deserves the MVP for that, just sort of sticking with it, despite the fact that a lot of people who are watching tonight probably wouldn't want to... Rev, you're a master <laughs> communicator. When you look at this administration, especially on things like the economy, the economy is complicated, but the economy is improving. How do you tell people that? Because in order to slow inflation, you actually need unemployment to go up a bit, and ain't nobody want to hear that. No, it's <laughs> very difficult. Uh, to communicate with people unless you have that kind of skill. And Joe Biden is not an orator, but his gift is that he talks to people in a way people feel that he feels them. He, he talks with compassion. He's the guy that will shake every hand. And you just have a sense he's a decent guy. So if he got up and tried to make a huge uh, oratorical uh, uh, speech, he's not the guy. But if you want a guy that says, hey, let me tell you what's really going on. You might say this is the guy I want to hear, and he has made some progress. But, David, I watched Elizabeth Warren kind of grill Jay Powell, saying, are, are you saying you want 2 million Americans to lose their jobs? Well, nobody watching wants that. Nobody wants that for the American people, but Jay Powell can't control that. Jay Powell can't control corporate greed. No, but she's channeling what I think a lot of people think, which is why are you saying that you have to lay off all these people to fight high inflation? He continues to make the case that having high inflation is worth, worth for us long term, for the economy right now and long term, to have it persistent. Uh, it's tough medicine. And I, again, I don't envy him having to administer it to... Alex, who's yours? 
It is those hero volunteers that went out there and beat, like, the San Bernardino, San Bernardino County uh, rescue, the sheriffs and those folks that tried to come up from the lowlands into the mountains up there. It's amazing to me. I am a California girl. I spent a lot of summers at Lake Arrowhead. I was heartbroken looking at the way this town was deluged and these people were stuck. And you saw those people would come with food, with medicine, with pet food. I mean, we forget our pets. I'm a pet lover. And I was like, yes, pet food. You know, they would climb over mounds of snow at their own peril. I was so impressed with what they did. And they were beating all of the officials. I mean, it's a precarious road, I'll grant you. The, the road getting up there, you don't take it lightly, even in good weather. But, but those just community-minded heroes who yeah. put love first yeah. are the people we should talk about every yeah. day. Rev, who's yours? Congresswoman uh, Terry Sewell of Selma, mm-hmm. Alabama, who would not let the country go without dealing with the Voting Rights Day. John Lewis, uh, who's now gone, she pulled it together, got President Biden, got all of us there. Fire Rose, who coordinates the Jubilee. Uh, those two women would be my MVPs. I took two from them. Yeah. Because <laughs> they had thousands of people came to Selma, Alabama, and a lot of people thought after John Lewis, We'd forget, and we didn't. And to get the president to come and march across that bridge, the only sitting president uh, has done it twice, Obama and now him. And uh, it was an awesome thing, and it wouldn't happen without those two ladies. How many times have you done it? About 25. I was too young when they started 58 years ago, but growing up in the movement, it became a rites of passage. And uh, I was there the last time John Lewis was there. We helped hold him up. And mm-hmm. this time I helped wheel Jesse Jackson, who's now mm-hmm. in the wheelchair, across. And these are the guys that paid a price that made a way for people like me to do what we do. That is a beautiful yeah. honor. My MVP of the week is a special American. I talked about him earlier this week. His name's Michael Cleveland. You might not ever have heard of him, but you're going to now. He was born blind and mostly deaf. And he is now one of the most famous fiddlers on the planet. I want to share a little sample of just how good this man is. All right, and here's a very, very fun fact for you. Our David Gura, part of our nightcap tonight, has seen him perform in person. And I don't know if you know this about David. He himself (laughs) is a superstar fiddler. I thank you all for watching. And David is going to play us off the air tonight. Mr. Gura. I'm I'm no Michael Cleveland. (laughs) Maestro.